Welcome to episode 30 of the Cybersecurity Happy Hour podcast. I am your host, Christy, and the topic for today's podcast is cyber forensics. Now, I'm going to really start off by generally speaking about computer forensics. Sometimes computer forensics uh, is also known as digital forensics or cyber forensics. It is the um, investigation of data. Some would have happened within an organization or really anything criminal. And the experts are called in to gather evidence. And in some countries, some experts could be uh, the police or sometimes it could be a private forensic firm and all this is part of cybercrime fight, the fight for cybercrime. So basically what the forensic expert would do when they called in, they would find evidence. So they would locate that data, they would extract that information and with the intention of either use for disciplinary purposes or for criminal investigation. So it is basically the steps of investigating and once they investigate and gathering and analyzing these evidence from either a computer, it could be a, a mobile phone, it could be even networks. And one core thing that typically happens with uh, forensics in general is to ensure that the chain of evidence has been maintained and also find out who was responsible or find out who the perpetrator and the method they use to either carry out that crime or, or to hide their footsteps. So I'm discussing this um, as really part of our podcast, our arm of our podcast, because we talk about all things cyber and I also want to talk about the forensic aspects of it and um, highlight what forensic uh, investigators do when they are called in. So typically they'll be called in, um, something's happened of course, and the incident response team would have followed the steps of incident response and typically a forensic expert aim is to recover, so sometimes files might be deleted, a perpetrator might delete files, um, they will examine if, they, if there's any chat logs, they would um, examine emails, now, if this is a, a mobile device, they would, uh, they would um, um, examine also SMS messages or even these messages can be deleted, uh, phone calls, anything to do with audio, audio communication as well. And also they can determine the type of programs as well. So, it, so if this particular, let's say email, they can understand what email was used um, for uh, gather evidence from those emails. I mean, this is an area I'm personally being uh, very passionate about. I mean, personally, I, I, when I did my own masters, I did forensics as part of the major civil so system security and forensics. Firstly, I've under, undergone some forensic works, part of the services we provide within our own company. So it's something that I love, I, lo I really love to do. So, so I'd, I'd have mentioned that the core thing is really gathering digital evidence. Gathering the digital evidence and tracking the perpetrator who ever carried out these. Now, it might appear quite simple, but sometimes you may, the investigator will encounter huge amounts of data. So if, and, and sometimes the perpetrators they're quite smart or they tend to be smart, some are, um, and they would try to also hide this data, let's say in, uh, in, in areas they have deemed, uh, first a hard drive as corrupt, but they could hide data there. It's not really just gathering evidence to prosecute. The evidence as well can also help prove a person's innocence. Okay, so it's not just, oh, when they get it to prosecute, it must also prove someone's innocent. And it is used for different types of inc uh, incidents, such as uh, it could be for, for murder, it could be a theft, it could be even loss of um, intellectual property. So go uh, looking at the, following the, the trail of audits, sometimes um, the information would have left the organization um, uh, infrastructure 
So basically, this is basically what the investigators would do is basically tracking the systems and help find the attacker. Sometimes it's a V could be more than one. Now, of course, there they are various steps, which I would say they're quite rigid if you are gathering information or gathering evidence. So the first step definitely would be identification. So when you identify if that actual that evidence actually exists, okay. So you find out if the, the uh, evidence is there, where that evidence is stored, what format it is stored in. So there are different types of format. So that's the first step is identification. So the second step, okay, once it's been identified, then we need to preserve that data. Remember, this there'll be a time where it may need to go to court, so that data cannot be corrupted, and it sh must be tamper proof especially when it comes to um, volatile data like memory okay so I want to ensure that is the preserve the evidence that is gathered now once it's been preserved then the first step is analyze the data analysis so it could be analyzed data it could be a whole set of systems um, and I didn't mention previously that sometimes we um, investigate um, files that have been deleted, um, uh, even sometimes some files, depends on the program that was used, they can, deleted files can be recovered as well, okay? Fourth step is documentation. So with everything that you, you gather, we must put it down on paper. So it must, we'll keep a record of everything that was collected, everything was recovered, okay? And as you recover and begin to build a picture, so we really, really document and review it. And then the final stage is presentation. So you've got all this evidence, you follow the chain of evidence, what do you do with it? So again, once the data has been analyzed, it's then presented either in a court or it could be presented to um, as maybe a HR or as part of the disciplinary process. Now, as I mentioned before that there are different types of forensics. So again, it depends on what the client um, wants you to investigate, or I would say even the, even if you were even the police. So you could be your network. So if it's a network forensic, what would the investigator do? Again, you may be analyzing network traffic. That's why I said as a forensic um, uh, professional, you must have a full understanding of IT in general, understanding languages, okay, Python, depends, C, Java. So you analyze this network traffic using various tools, analyze IDS system if the organization has those tools as well, they use those tools. So that's network. Then what if it's, uh, you might be called in to uh, investigate emails? We've got email forensics as well. As part of the process of checking um, the email forensics, they will we'll gather that evidence and do a thorough check of any existing emails or emails that has been uh, have been deleted. So they recover emails. And then again, as part of the analysis, they want to extract anything that can be used in the court of law and to relate to the case. Then we've got malware forensics. Okay, so you need to do with malware, it could be um, um, a case involving some kind of hacking, maybe someone hacks into the, um, uh, the, the environment infrastructure and they're either they've in, in implemented um, some kind of uh, malware. So the forensic expert will uh, have knowledge, you must have knowledge of malware analysis. So you're going to be examining things like Trojans, um, trying to find out the, or digitize the footprint, follow the footsteps. Um, of the perpetrator. Then other ones we've got, I mentioned about mobile phones. So sometimes it's not really just a computer, it could be a mobile phone forensics. Okay, so this for mobile phone typically deal with mobile phones. So the same principle applies. You're going to what? Ensure that the chain of evidence is, is maintained. The data is not corrupted. Okay, data is docu documented, examined and analyzed. From, it could be a one or many mobile phones. Then we have database forensics. Again, same principle applies. So use the forensic analysis and analyze the data from 
different database. So again, as a forensic expert, you understand, you must understand SQL and the different types of database, how they're related, and the metadata as well. Disk forensics as well, so that's another one. Okay, so again, some of these, these information are stored on a disk. So again, you must know how to, let's extract data from any sort of storage media, okay? So again, using various tools, I'm going to mention one FTK for imaging, NCASE, we have autopsy as well, various to mention a few forensic tools that can use to what to ensure that the files are not corrupted. Uh, you're going to examine deleted files or files that are still active. So as a forensic investigator, there are various techniques that is used. Let's say there's one live analysis. So if it's a live analysis, then this technique we, we will analyze the system of the, the computer, the system of the device of the perpetrator. You will write you, you will examine it the operating system while it is booted up, while it's running. Okay. And what's the intention of this? To ensure you have to get some valuable information from any random access memory. I mentioned also another technique about looking at deleted files. So again, you'll be looking at deleted files and recovering data from that. So you may be searching some of the memory, you may be searching some uh, um, deleted file. If sometimes, if that file is not, something could be partial, well, I mean partial, sometimes the part of the file can be overwritten, but you can still get gather evidence from the rest of the recovered file. It hides, if you're hiding data, I would say in plain sight, so they would have the, the cyber criminal or the, or the criminal or the perpetrator would have hidden these files in plain sight. Let's say you, let's say it's the evidence in some words and is embedded in a WAV file, for example. So the forensic examiner would do that reverse diagnography and analyze that data. So reverse, so just reverse it and find out as much information that is hidden within another file. So if I've uh, whetted your appetite for, for people maybe interested in as a career or branching out from, let's say your pen tester, you want to probably move into for uh, forensics, what skills do you need? Now I just said, say before that obviously you must have some understanding of uh, information technology, understanding of programming languages and then understanding the technologies used within mobile phones uh, and computers, understanding security breaches in general, having to understand how breaches happen. Um, I won't say uh, the psychology of it because obviously sometimes we, the motive could be financial, but try to understand the mindset of the, the criminal, the criminal mind. Okay, so I would say there are different routes, either the true academia, so you can do a degree, the um, various universities is doing cyber, for, uh, cyber forensic degree, or if you have an existing IT degree, you can uh, also do a master's in this. And there are various certifications, ISC Square. So ISC Square does one, which is a certified cyber forensic professional certification. And you can also, if you still want to go to the certification, which you can certify in some of the forensic tools. We have the NK Certified Examiner Certification Program, other one known as ENTS. Um, they are autopsy or, um, and FTK. Or, well, you can play with autopsy just to get yourself familiarized with for cyber forensics or forensics in general, digital forensics in general. Um, go to the FT, uh, look at FTK and okay, do some imaging of, of hard drives and then see what you can gather from there. So obviously having that passion or interest, I would say is the first step, but you can go through either through a, a degree route or you can go through a certification route. And um, GIAC have other forensic uh, certification so um, so GIAC certified forensic examiner um, once you've uh, passed that you'll be uh, a GCFE uh, examiner other accreditations you want to focus on mobile um, devices they, they have also have an advanced smartphone forensics um, 
GIC Battlefield Forensics and Acquisition. Now, one thing I must mention is that um, you may have the knowledge, but one key skill that one must have as a cybersecurity professional is good communication because you may need to present these evidence either written in a written communication or verbal communication. So you may need to present this in court. You might be called in as the examiner that gathered the evidence and you, you may need to explain it in a language that a novice would understand. So you may need to probably do an executive summary or put in a language that other experts would understand. So it must be um, deal with clarity. So it must be clear and so, so that part of it is quite important because you, you may be very good with the IT and the cyber, but obviously you, you were called in to carry out a task and those who called you to carry out the task want to understand what has actually happened to the system. So breaking it down into um, a language that the audience will understand is quite important. So as I mentioned again, what would you do? So you, the, usually the forensics examiner is, the role is quite varied, I said, but typically what you would definitely be doing is acquisition of, uh, of data, analyzing data as well, uh, depending on, sometimes you may need to uh, start that acquisition on site, or you might be doing this in, in a lab. But the core cool thing here is, is to follow um, forensic guidelines like ACPO, Association of Chief Police Officer Guidelines, that kind of gives you some insights on how to ensure that the data that you've collected or retrieved is sound and also the software that you choose to use is, uh, I mean, you, you have the choice of using software, any software, of course, but the software, the program that you use to gather this evidence must be sound and tamper-proof. You're going to do a lot of recording and work with other investigators as well. So again, how working the team, having that knowledge of working the team, um, can be good communication skill. You may have to love to liaise with um, um, other, like the police as well, or other agencies who might be interested in that evidence. Now that's all I have for you in this podcast. Thank you once again for tuning in and listening. You can contact me at, um, at Intex IT or you can send a message using this podcast, Communication Avenues. Thank you once again and have a blessed day.